everyone, welcome to the AMA with Hydra Hasgrab between Ed Garcia, the head of Asia Pacific region and ICOGENS. So my name is Jenny from ICOGENS, an ICO rating and review website with more than 20 ICO analysts. We are working day by day to provide information of the best ICO projects for the community. So you can find us at ICOGENS.com for more updates. So let's back to our main topic today. To talk about Hedra Hasgraf, it's our honor to have you, Edgar Sear, the head of Asia Pacific region here today. First of all, please introduce a little bit about you. Sure. Well, first of all, thanks, Jenny, for having me here. So just to give a quick background about myself, mm -hmm. uh, I grew up in Singapore. I went to the US for my undergraduate. And then I worked as a bond trader at an investment bank for seven years uh, yes. in New York and Tokyo. Mm -hmm. And uh, I left the finance industry in 2010. Uh, I did some nonprofit work in West Africa. Mm. And then after that, since 2012, I've been investing and advising early stage tech companies. Mm -hmm. now, I've been looking at blockchain technology for over two years now. Uh, very excited about the space, but also saw a lot of limitations with the existing blockchain technology. So when I read the hash graph, white paper, uh, this was June of last year, I was blown away by what Dr. Lehman Baird had invented with Hashgraph, because I see Hashgraph solving all the limitations of existing blockchain technology. So I was so excited about what he had created that I wanted to be a part of the team. So I joined the company October of last year, I moved back home to Singapore, and now I run the Asia Pacific region for the company. Oh, okay. So you have been working here for more than six months, right? And yeah. yes, of course, we know that ICO market is a promising one now. And of course, Hedra Hasgraf is a potential project. So as far as I know, Hedra Hasgraf has got the attention of many people for the past few months, especially in August when the crowd sale took place. So I think now everyone are very curious of the progress of the project at the moment. So can you give us a brief introduction about the project? Yeah, sure. Uh, and maybe I can just start with the, the Hashgraph consensus algorithm. Mm -hmm. So the Hashgraph consensus algorithm was invented in 2015 by Dr. Lehman Baird, our co-founder and chief scientist. Mm -hmm. uh, and Hashgraph is a consensus algorithm, just like blockchain or proof of work blockchain, consensus algorithm. And, and the properties of Hashgraph are that it's fast, so it achieves speeds of hundreds of thousands of transactions per second. Mm -hmm. uh, also secure. Uh, it achieves a, a level of security called asynchronous business and fault tolerance, which is the highest level of security possible in distributed consensus. And it's also fair. And, and by that, I mean that there's no member of the community that can affect the order of the transaction that of, of the transactions that enter into the ledger and this is this is quite unique in distributed ledger technology because all the other platforms out there or uh, the other consensus algorithms out there uh, do not have this property of fairness mm -hmm. and so hashgraph was used by uh, by enterprises up until uh, well uh, Hashgraph was initially used by, by enterprises in permission settings, but it was uh, only in March of uh, 2018, so earlier this year, that we announced Hedera Hashgraph. And what Hedera Hashgraph is, is the public ledger built on top of Hashgraph. Mm -hmm. Yes, but I think that everybody has like uh, the basic information or knowledge of the project, right? Um, so as you have said, there are a lot of outstanding features of the project. However, I want to ask about the challenges uh, that the project have met from the early stage and also in comparison with other like similar idea projects. Right. No, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, you know, I, I think quite objectively, if you look at, at the speed and security mm -hmm. of Hashgraph, uh, it, it's significantly better than uh, many of the other technologies mm -hmm. that exist in the marketplace. And I, I would say the, the real main challenge that, that we face, or, or maybe that might be faced by members of the community, is that this is a brand new code base. So, so people that 
uh, that may be already familiar with the other platforms or, or other languages, um, it will take some time for them to get familiar with, uh, with the code base of Federa Hashgraph. Now, having said that, we are putting a lot of resources together and educational resources together to make that, that learning process as easy as possible for developers within our community. Mm, yes, I think that you have a very strong team and also you put a lot of effort to it. So I think you will overcome it easily. Let's talk about the crowd sale a little bit. Uh, all of know that the crowd sale took place and also finished in uh, August, right? Uh, so your fundraising has already closed not so long ago. Uh, I think it had a very impressive result. First of all, you have successfully raised 100 million USD in the previous round, like seed round and private sale, and now another 20 million USD in crowd sale. So can you share some information about it? Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, first of all, I think we we're, we're all uh, as a team very honored that we've received so much support from the from the global community mm -hmm. uh, in, in our token sale, right? Uh, and and given the the current crypto environment, uh, you know, it has been quite challenging for a lot of other platforms, uh, but uh, we haven't faced uh, as much challenge there uh, simply because I think there are a lot of people out there within our community that believe in our technology as well as the team that we've put together. So as you announced on Twitter, 6,000 people registered for the crowd sale. So that is a significant one, very impressive. So do you, have, do you meet any difficulties in refining qualified applications? No, uh, we, we didn't really meet any challenges there. I mean, we have a a company that we're hired to help us with the accreditation and, and verification process. Uh, I, I would say uh, if, if there was any challenge uh, was really from a regulatory standpoint uh, and because we want to follow all the regulations uh, of the different governments around the world, mm -hmm. uh, we were limited in terms of which countries we could sell the tokens to uh, and the countries where, where we couldn't sell tokens to included China, Japan, uh, Russia, and, and Vietnam. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we couldn't sell tokens into these countries, but hopefully we can, uh, we can create other activities where, where people in these uh, countries will be able to participate within our ecosystem at some point in the future. Yes, I can see. So there are still countries which prohibit people from joining crown sale or ICO, right? So that is the pity. Uh, but I, I'm sure that you can have a way for the community to take part in the system uh, let, later, right? Okay. Um, I can see on the website that there, there is not much information about the funds investing in the project. So can you share a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, so at, at this point, a lot of the, the funds raised um, are are meant to build up the platform, mm -hmm. right? And also um, promote the platform across the different countries uh, around the world. Uh, eventually, we do expect that uh, there will be resources that we can we can have to mm -hmm. to help support uh, companies that are building. Uh, within our ecosystem and be actually and actually be able to invest in these companies. Mm, yeah, okay. So uh, do you plan to reveal the name of the funds which already invest in Hedra Hasgrab in the near future? Uh, as far as the funds that have invested in, in our token sale, uh, they're actually uh, the big names are mostly listed on our website. Mm -hmm. So if you go on kaderahashgrab.com uh, you can click on a link to see all, uh, most of the investors that have invested. Mm, yes, I can see. Uh, so to some projects, people don't care much about the project and leave Telegram group or other social channels after ICO. So is that a concern for you? Uh, no, that, that's not a concern for us. Uh, we, we understand that in this space to be successful, mm -hmm. you need to, you can't just have great technology. Uh, the community is just as important. So we, we fully expect to continue to, to build support and, and grow our community and particularly our community of developers 
because we want to encourage these developers to be building on our platform. Mm, yeah, I can see that you have a very strong community on the Telegram group, and it's an active one. Right? It's a great thing. Uh, so let's back to a technology a little bit. Um, Hydra aims to create a fast, fair, and secure platform, right? So what technologies do you apply to achieve that? Well, it, it really it really comes down to the Hashgraph consensus algorithm, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And uh, and maybe just to take a step back a little bit, Dr. Lehman Baer, the inventor of Hashgraph, has been working on this since 2012. Mm -hmm. And and he he had a breakthrough in, in 2015, and that's what we now call Hashgraph. Oh, okay. So it's been a very long so, time ago. So um, a lot of the features. Yeah. That's right. And so a lot of the features uh, of Hedera Hashgraph really just comes from the the Hashgraph consensus algorithm. Mm, yes, I can see. So uh, that is the like outstanding technology for your project, right? Uh, as you mentioned, like, you said that Hedra Hashgraph uh, utilized Byzantine for tolerance. I think this is a new concept to some people. So can you explain how it works? Sure, and, and maybe just to clarify, Hedera Hashgraph doesn't utilize Byzantine fault tolerance. So the more accurate description is that Hedera Hashgraph achieves oh. asynchronous Byzantine fault tolerance. So uh, Byzantine fault tolerance is just a security standard used to describe or characterize distributed systems that can tolerate a certain class of failures or attacks. But I think the important thing here to note is that Hashgraph achieves the highest form of Byzantine fault tolerance. Oh. So a standard called asynchronous Byzantine fault tolerance, or ABFT, which is also the highest level of security possible within distributed consensus. Mm -hmm. and, and there are mathematical proofs behind Hashgraph achieving this level of security. Oh, okay. Yes, I can see. So uh, with Byzantine fault tolerance, I, can, I think that is will help Hedra to be like more secure. Uh, as you said, the more secure level, right? Um, so yes, as I have seen on the Telegram chat group, uh, admin said that there is testnet, right? But however, it's still an internal one. So when will the testnet be published to all community? No, that, that's a great question. So actually, our main that went live uh, a few days ago, mm. and the tokens have already been generated. We are still, uh, we're going to do some internal testing over the next month or so. And then after that, we will launch the beta phase of our network, which means we will allow uh, certain groups of developers that reach out to us to participate in our testing. So roughly about uh, a month from now, uh, developers uh, can participate in our testnet, and we're expecting the, the network to be open to the entire public uh, at the end of first quarter of 2000. Mm, yes, okay. Uh, so as you have heard, right, like in September, you are allowed to join the testnet. Right? And of course, I think that Hedra are very like, happy to receive the feedback from the developer and also the community. Right? Um, yes, and also three services are announced to be on first. Uh, the first one is cryptocurrency, the second is file storage, and the last one is smart contract. So when people can officially use them? Right, so we're, we're expecting that those three services will be available uh, by the time of our developer conference, uh, which will be in mid-October. Mm. Yes, uh, so... so yeah, we're expecting the three services to be, to be available on testnet uh, by mid-October, and, and certainly uh, available to the public when we launch the network to, to everyone broadly at the end of the Q1 of next year. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, so as you also mentioned about the conference, can you share more about it? Like the time, uh, the place? Yeah, something like that. Sure. Uh, so the name of our developer conference is Hedera 18. This is the first ever Hedera Hashgraph developer conference. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be held in Dallas uh, from October 14th to 16th. Oh, so okay. uh, 
it will be a, a series of presentations uh, by by members of our uh, of our team mm -hmm. and also other members of our, of our community that are building applications on the platform. Mm. And concurrent to that conference, we're also launching, we're also running uh, a global hackathon in five cities around the world. So they will be in Dallas, London, Tel Aviv, uh, Singapore, and Sao Paulo. Oh. Okay. And, and anyone that, that participates in, in the conference as well as the hackathon uh, will be able to receive uh, some of our tokens. Mm. Uh, as well as you know, if you if you win uh, the hackathon, you, there will be prizes that will be uh, that you can win in, uh, in the form of tokens. Mm, yeah, so this is a big chance for people to get the token, right? Especially developer. Uh, so how can developer join Hackathon? Like if there's a yeah, link. You can, go, mm -hmm. you can just go to the website, Hedera18, H-E-D-E-R-A, uh, 18.com. So Hedera18.com, and you can sign up for the Hackathon or the, the conference there. Oh, yes, okay, that is very informative. I think a lot of people will join that. Um, okay, so I, as I have seen on a video, so 19 out of 39 councils has been chosen, right? So can yes. you share information about like 19 councils? Sure, so, so we're actually up to the 20 um, members signed up. And maybe just to clarify, we have letters of intent signed with 20 large multinational corporations. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so these are companies that have expressed interest in participating in the governance of our platform, where right? we're putting together this council of 39 of the largest, most trusted corporations. Yes. Now, we, we can't review, we can reveal the names of the companies at this point, but these are among the top companies in the world. Uh, they are geo-distributed across the globe, mm -hmm. so there'll be representation from Asia, from Europe, from the U.S., from South America, um, and they're also across uh, many different industry verticals. Mm, yeah. We're targeting 18 different industry verticals. Huh, so, in short, there are also all around the world, right? That is, yeah. yes. Uh, so, what yeah, are the... And the, the... And the point behind that is to make sure that uh, the council is as distributed and decentralized as possible. Oh, okay. Uh, so what are the major criteria to become a council? Sure. I mean, the, I, I think the, the most important criteria is that it must have a well-known and trusted brand name. Mm -hmm. So the public needs to, to trust that these companies uh, are, are not doing anything malicious to the network. Mm. Uh, they have to trust that these companies are uh, want to participate in in building the the Hedera Hashgraph platform. Oh yes, okay. So first of all, the brand name is the most important thing, right? Uh, so other yeah. it's like uh, I can say it's like a KYC period for them to apply for it, right? Um, yes. Yeah, so I hope that like in the near future, next few months, we can know that the official name of the council. That is a very important information for the community. Yes, we, we are expecting to to announce the initial group of, of council members at some point in the next few months. So the next question is: Hedra has launched a campaign called Hedra Hasgraf Ambassador Program. So had it ended yet? Uh, no, no, it hasn't. So the ambassador program is, is ongoing. And what the ambassador program is, is there are, there are people within different cities around the world that are very enthusiastic about Hedera Hashgraph and, and want to be involved within our community. Mm -hmm. So these ambassadors help us um, organize meetups. Uh, they help us answer questions uh, uh, among people in their communities within mm -hmm. their their geography. Um, so yeah, that the ambassador program will will continue to be ongoing. We would welcome people from around the world that are interested in our ecosystem to participate as ambassadors. Oh, okay, so do you plan to have one in each country? 
Uh, yes, that's that's the goal. Uh, I think right now we have ambassadors in over a hundred countries around the world, mm -hmm. and uh, to the extent we can get it, not not just in each country, but also in each uh, major city. Oh, yes, okay. So maybe the two or three people in one country, right? In the big country, um, yeah. So so you know you can find the link to join the campaign on the Twitter. Uh, it's still going on, so. Try to be involved in the project. I think this will be a very great experience for everyone. Um, okay, so as I know that one of the good news we heard about the project is that there are many platforms, also DApps, building on Hedra, such as Noya, Digital Quality Network. So what feedback do you receive from those partners? Uh, that, that's a great question. So I think a lot of uh, dApps are attracted to the speed, security, and fairness properties of Hedera Hashgraph. And so, you know, they're going to be able to build applications on Hedera Hashgraph mm -hmm. that are just simply not possible on other platforms. And so, uh, so we've received a lot of positive uh, feedback and, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of applications or, or dApps that have tested other platforms are coming to Hedera Hashgraph mm -hmm. uh, because our our technology just allows them to do so much more. Yes, yeah, so what does your team do to support the project? Sure, that, that's a great question. So we want to make the, the platform as, as easy as possible for, for all the dApps to build on. So we are uh, we're in the process of building an education platform which yes. will be available online where developers can learn and understand uh, how to build applications on Hedera. Yes. Uh, we also have a team within Hedera that we call developer advocates. So these are these are developers who are uh, who work for us uh, and their role is to support and educate other developers with our community. Mm -hmm. how to build applications on Hedera. Oh, yes, I guess so. You support them a lot. Of course, I can see why you receive positive feedback from them. Mm -hmm. um, so are you negotiating with other projects at the moment? Well, so far we have uh, 15 to 20 projects that have uh, put out press releases that they, have, that they are building their applications on Hedera. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned a, a few of them so far yes right uh, but we also have a, a pipeline of over 100 other projects that have expressed interest in building on our platform mm. so to answer your question yes we are we are talking to them and and once our test net uh is available for developers to participate in we expect those numbers to, to get even higher mm, yes i can see also i think after the test net the uh the project one to build on your like your system your platform will increase very rapidly i think so uh so anyways that's all the question that we have and also the question from our community to hydra has graph it's an honor once again to have you here with us in our ama today and thank you for joining our ama uh so some last word to the community um, yeah, no. Well, first of all, Jenny, I just want to thank you for, for inviting me to participate in this AMA. And um, I, to the community, I would say look out for our testnet and, and come join us at Hedera 18, uh, our developer conference in uh, October 14 to 16. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is the important thing. That is a big conference and also hackathon. Remember to join this if you are a developer and also community. Um, okay, so thank you for joining us today. Hope to see you in our next uh, AMA. Okay. Thanks, yeah. Jenny. Yes. Okay. Thank you and goodbye.